Hey everybody, uh, I'm on travel again this week and uh, just like a couple weeks ago, uh, we'll do the devotion tonight through this video. Um, we'll go through Acts, I think, yeah, 13 and 14 is tonight. We'll try to get through those. Um, we'll read quite a bit of the scripture and then I'll give Dana some cues to kind of pause the video, give you guys an opportunity to talk. Uh, hope you're enjoying this study of Acts like I am. Very enlightening, super powerful to see how the, the original church is getting started. So I hope you've had a good week, and uh, we'll just get right into it. I'll start reading with Acts in Acts chapter 13. Now in the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers, uh, Barnabas, Simon called, Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manin, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. So a group of, of uh, followers getting together worshiping, and then um, the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit commands them to send Barnabas and Saul to go do this separate mission. So the two of them sent on their way by the Holy Spirit went down to Seleucia and sailed from there to Cyprus. When they arrived at Salamis, they proclaimed the word of God in the Jewish synagogues. John was with them there as their helper. A uh, key point before we continue on with verse 6, like it's a big deal that they're going to proclaim uh, this gospel in the Jewish synagogues because, again, they have their own views of how things went down. Um, you know, you see the disciples being persecuted amongst the Jewish people often throughout these first 12 chapters. So the fact that God sent them to go speak the, the gospel and the word of God to the Jews was a big deal. Keeping on with uh, verse 6, they traveled through the whole island until they came to Paphos. They were met, there they were met, a, there they met a Jewish sorcerer and false prophet named Bar-Jesus, who was an attendant of the Pronicusol, Sergius Paulus, the the Pronicusol, an intelligent man, sent for Barnabas and Saul because he wanted to hear the word of God. But Elamias, the sorcerer, opposed them and tried to turn turn um, the Pronicusol from the faith. Then Saul, who was also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked straight at Elamias and said, "You are a child of the devil and an enemy to, of everything that is right. You are full of all kinds of deceit and trickery. Will you never stop perverting the way?" the right ways of the Lord. Now the hand of the Lord is against you. You're going to be blind for a time, not even able to see the light of the sun. Immediately, mist and darkness came over him, and he groped about, seeking someone to lead him by the hand. When the Pronoscule saw what had happened, he believed, for he was amazed at the teaching at the teaching about the Lord. Uh, we're going to stop for the first time right here. And, you know, it's interesting here because these guys... Um, these guys run up against Barnabas and Saul run up against this sorcerer, this very dark person that has power. And they meet, they respond to that trickery, that sorcery with, hey, you know, if you don't be careful, God's going to strike you blind. And that's exactly what he did. So for a minute, I want you to apply this to your own life. And, and if y'all don't mind, talk about a time where maybe you had fear. You know, the sorcerer represents fear, represents something that you're scared of. Can you talk about how you've responded to fear or a situation of fear in your past and how maybe you didn't speak like Barnabas and Saul did with boldness, but you maybe fell victim to that fear? And talk about like ways you've maybe overcome fear in the past. So we'll stop right there for a minute. All right, we're going to continue reading on in uh, verse 13. From Paphos, Paul and his companions sailed to Perga in Pamphylia, where John let them left them to return to Jerusalem. From Perga, they went on to Pistia and Antioch. On the Sabbath, they entered the synagogue and sat down. After the reading from the law and the prophets, the leaders of the synagogue sent word to them, saying, Brothers, if you have a word of exhortation uh, for the people, please speak. Standing up, Paul motioned with his hand and said, Fellow Israelites and you Gentiles who worship God, listen to me. The God of the people of Israel chose our ancestors. He made the people prosper during their stay in Egypt. With mighty power, he led them out of the country. For about 40 years, he endured the con their conduct in the wilderness, and he overthrew seven nations in Canaan, giving their land to his people as their inheritance. All this took about 450 years. 
After this, God gave them judges until the time of Samuel the prophet. Then the people asked for a king, and he gave them Saul, son of Kish, of the tribe of Benjamin, who ruled forty years. After removing Saul, he made David their king. God testified concerning him, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do everything I want him to do. From this man's descendants, God has brought to Israel the Savior Jesus, as he promised. Before the coming of Jesus, John preached repentance and baptism to all the people of Israel. As John was completing his work, he said, What do you suppose I am? I am not the one you're looking for, but there is one coming after me whose sandals I, I'm not worthy to untie. Fellow children of Abraham and your God, fearing Gentiles, it is to, it is to us that this message of salvation has been sent people of Jerusalem and their rulers did not recognize Jesus, yet in condemning him they fulfilled the words of the prophets that they read every Sabbath. Uh, though they found no proper ground for a death sentence, they asked Pilate to have him executed. When they carried out what was written about him, they took, down, took him down from a cross, laid him in a tomb, God raised him from the dead, and for many days he was seen by those who had traveled with him from Galilee to Jerusalem. They are now witnesses to our people. We tell you the good news. What God promised our ancestors, he has fulfilled for us, their children, by raising up Jesus. As it is written in the second psalm, you are my son, today I have become your father. God raised him from the dead so that he will never be subject to decay. As God has said, I will give you the holy and sure blessings promised to David. So it is also stated elsewhere, you will not let your holy one see decay. Uh, now that David has served God's purpose in his own generation, he fell asleep. He was buried with his ancestors and his body decayed. But the one whom God raised from the dead did not see decay. Therefore, my friends, I want you to know that through Jesus, the forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you. Through him, everyone who believes is set free from every sin and justification you were not able to obtain under the law of Moses. Take care that the prophets uh, have said does not happen to you. Look, you scoffers, wander and perish, for I am going to do something in your days that you would never believe, even if I told you. As Again, so real quick, we've read a lot there. All Paul and Barnabas have done, we've talked about this a lot in this study, is they've reminded these people what Jesus did for them. They made sure they understood. They made sure they reminded them what Christ did for all. And I think it's really important that we continually remind one another that although we know what Jesus did for us, we need to remind ourselves and remind other people around us what Jesus did for us. What he did on the cross, what he did by conquering death, and what he continues to do for us individually each and every day. We need to constantly remind ourselves because if we don't remind ourselves, we're going to forget and fall into doubt, fall into temptation. So there's a reason this, this first several chapters of Acts, it follows the same model like every chapter. These guys stand up and just talk about what Jesus just recently did. And they're talking about it to people that witnessed it all because they've forgotten, right? So I think it's critical as believers that we remind ourselves often, daily, what Jesus did for us. As Paul and Barnabas were leaving the synagogue, the people invited them to speak further about the things on the next Sabbath. So they invited them to stay another week and come back and talk again. When the congregation was dismissed, many of the Jews and devout converts to Judaism followed Paul and Barnabas, who talked with them and urged them to continue in the grace of God. So next week, almost the whole city gathered to hear them talk, right? When the Jews uh, saw the crowd, they were filled with jealousy. They began to contradict what Paul was saying and heaped abuse on him. When Paul and Barnabas answered them boldly, we had to speak the word of God to you first. Since you reject it and do not consider yourselves worthy of eternal life, we now turn to the Gentiles. For this is what the Lord has commanded us. I have made you a light for the Gentiles that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. When the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and honored the word of the Lord. And all who were appointed for eternal life believed. The word of the Lord spread through the whole region. But the Jewish leaders incited that God-fearing women of high standard and the leading men of the city. They started up persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them from their region. So they shook, all, so they shook the dust off their feet as a warning to them and went to Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. You know, this is kind of a sad ending in, in Acts chapter 13. Because they went to this place. They started to proclaim the good news. A lot of people wanted them to stay. A lot of people wanted them to stay to the next week. And then the next week came and the whole city showed up to hear them. But there was a section, a small sect of people that couldn't stand it. That denied it. That, that would turn away from it. And... They start up persecution, and they expelled them from the region. Those small, that small group, 
And so it says, Paul and Barnabas shook the dust off their feet as a warning to them and went to Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy uh, with the Holy Spirit. It's sad because, you know, there was a lot of goodness done in that region. But at the end of the day, a small small group of people kind of ran them off. Um, and, you know, they had to just forget about it and, and move on. And so I guess the, the reminder to us here is, you know, I think we've talked about some about this in this in this class before, but, you know, the gospel and the Holy Spirit are life changing, but people have to accept it, right? Like it can be, it, it's so transformational, but at the end of the day, there's still going to be people that are going to turn away and going to reject it. And so don't be discouraged when people in your life just don't want to hear it, that people in your life, just no matter what kind of life changing transformation that you've encountered and you've shown them, they still don't want it. Right. So like, don't get discouraged by that. And you may just have to, to move on. Don't ever forget about them, but may have to move on. So we'll stop right here real quick and see if anybody wants to share kind of those kind of stories, those kind of examples of where you've encountered people in your life that just do not want to hear it. And how are you continuing and continually trying to pierce those hearts and those relationships to, 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 to talk about the Lord with them. So real quick, just pause right here, Dana, and y'all can talk about, yeah, just ways and experiences you guys have had with people that don't want to hear about your faith and or don't want to see experience Jesus. All right, we're going to continue on with uh, chapter 14. Um, at Iconium, Paul and Barnabas went, as usual, into the Jewish synagogue. There they spoke so effectively that a great number of Jews and Greeks believed. But the Jews who refused to believe stirred up the other Gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brothers. So Paul and Barnabas spent considerable time there, speaking boldly for the Lord, who confirmed the message of his grace by enabling them to perform signs and wonders. The people of the city were divided. Some sided with the Jews, others with the apostles. There was a plot afoot among both Gentiles and Jews, together with their leaders, to mistreat them and stone them. But they found out about it and fled uh, to the Lyconian cities of Lystra and Derbe and to, and to the surrounding country where they continued to preach the gospel. So again, like Paul and Barnabas have traveled all over the place, you know, preaching the gospel. They were kicked out of a region, banned from the region, and now they've went into this new region and people are, are plotting to kill them. So again, there, there's, no, there's no luster and popularity in living a life that follows Jesus. There's just not uh, very, very difficult. Um, persecution will come your way. Starting with verse 8. In Lystra there sat a man who was lame. He had been that way from birth and never walked. He listened to Paul as he was speaking. Paul looked directly at him, saw that he had faith to be healed, and called out, Stand up on your feet. At that, the man jumped up and began to walk. Um, when the crowd saw what Paul had done, they shouted in the Lysonian a language, The gods have come down to us in human form. Barnabas they called Zeus, and Paul they called Hermes because he was the chief speaker. The priest of Zeus, whose temple was on the outside of the city, brought bulls and wreaths to the city gates because he and the crowd wanted to offer sacrifices to them. But when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of this, they tore their clothes and rushed out into the crowd shouting, Friends, why are you doing this? We too are only human like you. We are bringing the good news, telling you to turn from these worthless things to the living God, to the living God, who made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. In the past, he let all nations go their own way. Yet he has not let himself without testimony. He has shown kindness by giving you rain from heaven and crops in the seasons. He provided you with plenty of food and fills your hearts with joy. Even these words, they have difficulty keeping the crowd from sacrificing to them. Even with these words, they had difficulty keeping the crowd from sacrificing to them. Stop right there for a minute because that's wild. What just happened is, you know, through the Holy Spirit, through God, Paul is speaking and this guy that's never walked before that's lame hears him and Paul proclaims to him get up stand on your feet and the man was instantly healed by the power of God and the crowd around saw what happened and started calling Paul and Barnabas gods Zeus and Hermes and started sacrificing animals and started laying wreaths uh, at their feet calling them gods you know so they completely missed who did the work you know thought it was the Paul and Barnabas. And then Paul and Barnabas' reaction was hopefully the right reaction. And what we would all do is like furiously go out to the people and say, look, 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 that's, that's not us. You know, this is the God of heaven. 
that did this. But even with their words, the Bible says in verse 18 that Paul and Barnabas had difficulty keeping the crowd from sacrificing to them. You know, it's just a constant reminder to me that, um, you know, God's going to use you to do mighty things if you're a temple and a willing vessel to do those things. Um, but don't ever get confused as to who's behind those miracles, who's behind that boldness, who's behind that power and that authority. It is God the Father. You're just a vessel that's carrying his spirit. Um, but a lot of times on this earth, we're flesh. We're made of flesh, and we let our egos get in the way. We let our pride get in the way, kind of thinking, kind of telling ourselves that we're the talent, we're the power behind things that God uses, and that's just not. That can't be further from the truth. Um, so I think it's always critical to while you should be excited and honored to be used and be a vessel by, used by God and be a vessel for his spirit, it's always important to remain humble and to wake up every morning being thankful and thanking him that he's using someone as, as untalented um, and just unworthy as us and never get in the way of, of what God is trying to do because by, by trying to receive glory. And when people want to comment, compliment you for what you're doing, I think it's always important to respond with like, hey, man, I'm just a vessel that God uses. That's it. And that's what Paul and Barnabas did here. But as you can see, people are always, I think another example, another thing to, to bring up here is folks are always going to be looking for rationale uh, with why things happened the way they did. And the rationale typically will be another man or something someone did. Nobody ever wants to give credit for the Heavenly Father doing something miraculous. So. We'll finish out uh, verse 14 here, starting reading with verse 21. They preached the gospel in the city and won a large number of disciples. Then they returned to Lysteria, Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, strengthening the disciples and encouraging them to remain true to the faith. We must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God, they said. Paul and Barnabas appointed elders for them in each church and with prayer and fasting committed them to the Lord in whom they had put their trust. After going through Pisida, they came into Pamplia and they went and preached the word in Perga and went down to Italia. From Italia, they sailed back to Antioch where they had been committed to the grace of God for the work that they had completed. On arriving there, they gathered the church together and reported all that God had done through them and how he opened a door of faith to the Gentiles. And they stayed there for a long time uh, with the disciples. So that finishes up uh, Acts 14, and we're not going to get into 15 tonight. Just to recap um, what has happened in 14, Barnabas and, and Saul continued to spread the gospel to a lot of different regions, um, and a lot of cool things happened. A lame man was healed, uh, people were saved, people were filled with the Spirit, and good things happened. But with those good things, bad things happened as well. People turned from them. People denied them. People tried to have them killed and arrested. People banned them from their land. People banned them from the region. Uh, people blamed them for miracles. People called them gods. So the thing that really sticks out to me from chapter, really part of 13 and 14, is that in a life of faith, as God will use you as a vessel there's going to be good and bad things that happen things that um you, you see god's power you see god's moving in your life but you also see the broken world that we live in and the response from that broken flesh world uh it's not always positive there are people that deny you there are people that will persecute you there were people that will completely miss what you're trying to tell them and, and misinterpret it there will, people that, there will be people that disown you just like they disowned Paul and Barnabas and told them to leave their region. I guess what I'm not trying to say is just to be a reminder that, man, it's not rosy. It's not all, it's not all uh, glory. You know, it's, it's not all fun living a life uh, as a follower of Jesus. It's fantastic. It's the best thing ever. It's so rewarding. Uh, but our, reward, our ultimate reward will be eternal and not here so as long as we're here you know carrying out the mission that we're carrying out here on this earth to give god glory in all things that we do there's going to be some difficulty that you've got to walk through and this is an example of that you know these guys were healing people on one on one minute and the next minute being ran out of the region so don't be dismayed don't be discouraged 
um, when, when those bad things happen because they happen to Paul and Barnabas, they happen to all the other disciples. Uh, so it's going to happen to you. Um, so we're going to end right there. And for the rest of the time, uh, why don't you guys just share stories, if you don't mind, as comfortable as you feel with, you know, some persecution and difficulty you've experienced because of your faith. I mean, we all experience crap and go through tough stuff from time to time. But talk about directly, directly things you've dealt with because of your faith. And uh, y'all talk the rest of the time about that and hope you have a great rest of the week. And we'll see you hopefully at church Sunday.